Thank you, Robert. Uh, before I introduce our next speaker, uh, I just want to give a little bit of an overview on how we came to being part of the First Impressions Culinary Exchange. I guess it was early 2016, I got a call from Karen Fisher mentioning that uh, Halliburton County wanted to partner with us in the first ever First Impressions Culinary Exchange. And um, from there, we exchanged emails back and forth on how this uh, program was going to look like, and that bounced back with uh, Amanda at Halliburton as well. And uh, this fall, our first crew went out um, from Prince Edward County to Halliburton for the exchange. And uh, by all accounts, it was received very well. And we look forward to hearing the report here today. So Karen Fisher is going to uh, give you an overview of what the program looks like. And we'll go from there. Thanks, Grace, and welcome everyone on this uh, beautiful uh, Friday afternoon. I mean, the good thing is it is Friday, so. Um, uh, yes, and thank you uh, very much to both teams uh, for participating in this process. Uh, we, um, it, it, as Grace mentioned, it is a pilot for us to do a local food-focused uh, First Impressions Community Exchange. Um, and the First Impressions Community Exchange program has been around for probably about 12 years now. It's one of our um, uh, sort of main programs that has been taken up by hundreds of communities in Ontario since 2005. And uh, trying to be, you know, keeping up with, with the times, uh, we thought it might be a good time to look at piloting a... Um, uh, a local food uh, type of exchange. And... Um, we also have uh, sort of a full exchange where you look at the entire community. Uh, we have a tourism, we have a downtown focused, and now we, uh, as per the results of this process, uh, we will have a formalized uh, local food uh, first impressions. Now, just to give you a, sort of that high level overview of what first impressions is, which maybe only a few of you may not be aware, um, it, it's really just um, a secret shop of another community. And what happens is uh, we have regional staff like myself. I work out of the Brighton office and Prince Edward County is part of my territory. Um, we have regional staff across uh, Eastern Ontario, all across Ontario actually. And when we have a community that would like to participate in this program, uh, we basically put out a call to our colleagues and, and look for a match. And sometimes the communities come to us and say, we would like to be paired with um, you know, in this case, as it was, Halliburton uh, was requesting to be paired with Prince Edward County. So then we start those conversations, and if it works, you know, and, and the, the two communities feel that it's a good fit, then we proceed. And um, we provide uh, tools and resources and training to help the teams do the work, uh, but essentially it's the team within the community that is going out, uh, and you know it's done in different ways. Like in this particular instance, I believe several visits were done on different uh, weekends or weekdays uh, to try and capture a sense of the entire and. You know, we're talking large geographies and long distance driving. So, um, you know, it had to be tackled a little bit differently as well. But um, we had the pleasure of hearing back from the Prince Edward County team to Halliburton in uh, March, I believe, March 22nd, I think it was. And um, uh, it, it was, there was some, I, I think, uh, we really strongly feel that there was some really good information uh, exchanged at that meeting, and uh, some, a really good opportunity for Halliburton to take a look at its culinary um, uh, uh, strategic plan and see where the results of this process can feed into that. So, uh, and today we're hearing from Halliburton about their results coming here and really looking forward to again seeing what comes out of that and where Prince Edward County may uh, seize on some opportunities and uh, move forward with uh, their local food um, sector. So, I'll stop there. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to hearing the presentation from uh, Halliburton. Thank you. 
thanks everybody for coming today. Um, my name is Amanda Vertan and I'm the tourism director for the county of Halliburton. I'm wearing my, my Halliburton Highlands gear today, designed by Roots, made in Canada, very proud of it. Um, and I'm fortunate today to have, uh, or we are fortunate today to have with us the county warden, uh, Brent DeVolan. So he is the kind of the master of the whole county and also the reeve of uh, the township of Minden Hills. So we're gonna co-present today. Brent may jump in. Uh, as we go, and uh, I'd just like to introduce Brent because I believe Brent wants to say a few words before we get started. Thank you. <laughs> um, thanks, first of all, to everybody involved, the team that came to our area, and uh, obviously these ladies sitting in front of me here uh, that, that made this happen. Um, we're two very different communities, but both um, evolving, uh, tourists, and people from afar moving into our communities, whatever. And in that way, we're, ve we're very similar. And uh, so an exchange uh, was a great idea so that somebody with clean eyes comes and looks at, at your community. Uh, it's obvious from when we were here, and we, we split up the, uh, the geography into three sections, whatever. So I was mainly in the, uh, in the center and the east. And... Uh, as your mayor was here, your, the, the main street was tore up over there. But um, again, a, a community in transition. Uh, there, are, there are similarities, but there are differences. And, and one of the reasons that your region is of most interest, or was to me anyways, um, we don't have the history in food production that you do here in Prince Edward County. Uh, our historical, uh, the Canadian Land Immigration company gave properties off in the 1800s so forestry was for over 100 years the predominant industry as that started to wane uh, the 600 lakes that we have in our county more and more tourists made their way to our county and many of them become permanent residents so uh, that's kind of who we are uh, obviously the uh, with the travels that I did around your community, obviously there's lots of people that have started to come here seasonally and whatever and have made your community uh, their permanent home. So it, it's a mix of, uh, like our own, people that have been there for a long time and a lot of people from somewhere else. And they bring uh, some new exciting ideas with them, but they challenge the status quo and, and change isn't always comfortable for everybody. So in that way, we have an awful lot in common between your community and our community. And the goal is that uh, with fresh eyes, for somebody to look at our community, you know, what are our assets and what are the things that we could leverage and could be beneficial in the future. And as you would well know, and it's like speaking to the converted here, um, lots of times there's people within your communities that have observed some of these things that are well within our report. But lots of times people in your community will take it more seriously from somebody from outside of the community, comes and has a look in the strengths and the benefits. And certainly that's been one of the byproducts mm -hmm. of uh, the presentation that was done in Halliburton County. Uh, you identified some areas that, that maybe we didn't get them all, but lots of them, but it was in a very nice comprehensive form or whatever that uh, both from uh, politicians' point of view and county staff, uh, but also with our, uh, our stakeholders in the community and the tourism and other industries is uh, I think we're prepared to take a serious look and move on some of the areas of improvement. Hopefully, uh, we do as well in our presentation for the benefit of your communities as you did from ours. And just thank you for having us here. And on a rainy day, uh, mm -hmm. we're happy to be here and do this. And uh, Amanda will have the lead, but I'm occasionally known to interject a, a word or two along the way, like most politicians. Yes. Uh and I, I've warned Brent, I may throw him under the bus because I just started kind of not feeling so great. So I may like sit, but anyway, we have, we have 18 slides. Uh, feel free to interject throughout. We'll just uh, take questions throughout, probably the easiest way to, to do it, but we'll get rolling now and introduce the team that went. So we had a pretty uh, diverse team that went. We had uh, Brent, uh, uh, Carol Moffat, uh, who's a reeve of another township. There's four townships in, uh, in the county of Halliburton. Um, and we had uh, owners of Tamarack Lodge, who are uh, chefs and uh, uh, make produce goods as well. 
Uh, Andrew Von Zubin, who is the owner of Bedrock and Brambles, but also a homesteader, which is starting, is starting quite a big movement in our region, as I imagine you have some as well. Um, Kiri Stoll from Abbey Gardens. Uh, I think that the, those who, who came to our community got to check out Abbey Gardens. Um, Barry Martin from Yours Outdoors. Pat Martin, who was a planner in one of our municipalities. Aaron Walker, a chef. Uh, Bram Lebo, who owns our, uh, one, of the high one of the newspapers called The Highlander in our region. And Simon Payne, who's a local marketing uh, expert and radio personality. And as Brent said, we broke everyone up into three teams and entered in from different ways uh, through the county. And there's stars beside a few names there, and those are the folks who are members of the Halberton Culinary Task Tourism Task Force, which we started about two years ago. Um, when we, that was a recommendation when we worked with the Culinary Tourism Alliance. So this group's been really focused on you know, culinary and local food improvement in our region, and that's kind of the lens that we came to your region with as well. We did break out ourselves a little further too into personas, and this was part of um, the work I'm sure that some of you did as well. So we kind of came through the community with one of these lenses on. I, I believe I was, I had the young single adult lens on, so that was pretty, <laughs> that was different for me. Um, and I was the <laughs> new, new business looking to relocate, so I was having a more global look at the whole community. Yeah, and, uh, and we, we actually had people who fit every category pretty well, but uh, so, so that was how we were kind of rating the experiences as we were going through. Can you hear me okay from where I'm standing right now? Okay. Um, so prior to our visit, what did the team think? I, th as I, I think really one of the main observations was as soon as I told everyone we were uh, gonna be switching communities with Prince Edward County, everyone in Halbert Highlands went, oh my God. <laughs> Prince Edward County is amazing. Like so, it might have been the wine. Yeah, it might have been the wine. Yeah, so I think that that tells you that the team had obviously from the start had a very positive impression that uh, you guys are really a, a leader in the area of, of local food and drink. Um, most were quite aware of the area and especially you know excited about the opportunities to visit the the vineyards. Some team members more than others. Um, and there, but there was less awareness of the local food options available, like sort of outside of the, the beverages themselves. So that was something that was interesting prior to our visit. Um, everyone kind of thought of the region as rural and or cottage country, so much like ourselves. Um, in the research stage, we found that online information was easy to find, specifically around the taste trail. It's obvious that there's been a lot of work and development and that's been around for a number of years, but uh, not a few commented that some of the content was dated or, or hard to find or on different websites, which is, I think, a challenge that we all face depending on who's, who's building what and, and when and business owners are busy and it's hard to keep everything up to date. Um, and then when digging deeper through online research before we came, um, team members were discovering that cheese and agriculture really emerged as areas of focus for the county. The five minute drive. So we were asked to kind of uh, give quick, like our impression from the five minute drive through the county. So we all entered through a, a variety of gateways. The team that came through the Picton region was kind of met with this commercial strip, they said right away. So KFCs, McDonald's, but they said that once they got beyond that, it was like a breath of fresh air. Like they were in this rural cottage country, amazing setting, very pretty and inviting. Um, the other teams who entered and focused on Milford, Bloomfield, Wapoose, Rural, quiet, natural landscapes. I was in Wapoos. You were in Wapoos? Okay. Picked in in Wapoos. Okay. Um, and another team, uh, across the board, our whole team said that it seemed like an extremely prosperous area and a lot of the private properties were really well taken care of. So just whether it was commercial property or not, it was lovely just to travel along your winding roads and, and experience kind of what there was to see. Do you have anything you want to add there? No, speaking of talk of the two communities, Picton and Wapoos. Uh, Picton as from the from the uh, establishment the winery that we left and come into it uh it's a lovely drive through the country obviously with farmers fields versus lakes and trees it, it's a very different venue that we have but but beautiful nonetheless uh when we first came into uh, uh coming into picton the way that i came in you know there were a couple older kind of box stores that like a hardware store and uh, and a food store or whatever that look kind of out of sync and a little tired from kind of my expectations and some of the rest of it. Uh, certainly as we moved downtown, uh, the politician and me, the whole main street was torn up, which immediately I'm thinking like, this is serious investment in the downtown of Picton. Millions and millions of dollars, I'm sure. Uh, there were uh, a mix of businesses on the main street, 
There is a lot of lovely uh, buildings that are of an age that we do not have in our community that were tastefully done. There's one, I forget the name of it, that with coffees and teas and whatever, that, uh, and I bought a teapot while I was there, uh, that, that was good. And there were some other ones that had changed. There were, there were some other ones that weren't kind of on the same page. So again, with the street renewal and whatever, that uh, I'm sure that street looks quite different than it did from 10 years ago. And as when the street's done and more uh, commercial enterprises are encouraged to follow the trend, it will look different again. Uh, so that was very interesting to see. You also had little portable, um, I'll call them like wooden patios that went over the edge of the curb and out in the street, which uh, again with seasonal influx, we don't have anything like that, but it, it's uh, in future planning in my community. I took that as one of the homes, a good idea. I wonder if we can copy it and take it home. Uh, went down through the main street and down towards the boat launch uh, there. There were some new, I don't know whether they're condos or what they are on the right hand side. They're obviously modern business, but you can see that there was an attempt made to give them an old look and feel. And I would say that they were successful at that. Um, came down to the boat launch there, of which you have a lovely natural harbour. Mm -hmm. The one side was in great repair, the other side, I'll say on the government side, uh, the feds, uh, it's awful and uh, I'll be blunt and uh, your boat launch was open but the washrooms weren't and I had to go to the washroom. So anyways, just not nicking, nip pecking, nip pecking, whatever, but just certainly that was, so like I say, it's obvious a work in progress. And like I say, that's not to discourage anybody. And I'm sure that as the years go along, that evolution will continue. Then I went out to Wapus and again, lovely rural uh, with vineyards and farm, neat as a pin, but the signage, there were signs that showed to get there. And when I got there, is it a town or an area? Mm -hmm. And it was unclear so that when we kind of got there because there's like a 90 degree right and then a left whatever that was a sign and then I was expecting to come around the corner and there so I didn't know if it was a hamlet or whatever again beautiful but just answer the question for a new tourist is it an area or is it a hamlet and if it is then have the signage that properly identifies whatever but anyways it was a lovely uh, area and then went around drove around to, I guess it would be the north side where there's a beautiful place on both sides of the road that's stone and you look with lovely dining and good Lake beer and cheese. Eh? Lake of the Mountain. Yes. <laughs> uh, world class. That Europe, anywhere, whatever. People could come to that, whatever, and be right at home. And so, uh, and obviously good wine and beers. I understood that they bought a local microbrewery so that you know that the beer wasn't all from somewhere else. Anyways, again, if you have a beacon of how to encourage others to go whatever, mm -hmm. they get it. And it was lovely food and lovely decor and priced appropriately for what it was. So mm -hmm. that was that was a very good time that I had. So so that was my drive about yes, sir. Quick question, just getting back to when you're coming into the Yep. Did you find it a turn off to see the McDonald's and the KFC? Like, did, did you say anything, like, oh, this is not what I expected? Or is well, this just the outskirts again, of all towns again, speaking as a politician, as a you know, well, I get it. So I live in a community that's like this, so that's why I'm going to answer both ways. I, I get the theme and the visual look and whatever, but there's also, does it look inconsistent with some of the rest of it? Yeah, it does, but, but is there's public expectation with some of those kind of franchise foods? To have them yeah so I don't necessarily have the solution with planning or zoning whatever you know most of those big companies you can only encourage them so far to give it the kind of look that you're looking for they're usually pretty inflexible with that but I would say that in a perfect world you maybe wouldn't have those all in a tourist area or whatever but they're inevitable and there's people that want them and buy them and they they make good money so that isn't the that didn't jump out at me as negatively as those couple of box stores, not that they just, like I say, looked old and tired and looked inconsistent with a whole bunch of the other stuff that I saw elsewhere. So I guess to me particularly, the franchise food didn't affect me as negatively because I've gone to lots of tourist towns all over the place and the McDonald's of the world are there, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and I think from a tourism perspective, sorry to be sitting, I'm just, um, but I think from the tourist perspective too, it's, it is such a quick um, 
immersion into, into <laughs> thank you such a quick immersion like into the rural area that it's not that it wouldn't be a deterrent i don't think yeah i don't think so. um sorry can you hear me okay now from here okay sorry. You sound a little okay, okay. Um, so in terms of signage, uh, I, Brent touched on it a little bit. We thought that you had tons of directional signage, which was great, but it varied in style and condition, as, as most communities do. Um, as we said, you know, the Picton and Belleville entrances felt a bit commercial, but not um, representative of the experience through the rest of the county. I should actually say, too, bravo for branding the county, capital T, capital C. I mean, as the, as the, as the county of Halliburton, you know, we're pretty jealous of that to say that we, you are the county, but that's pretty, pretty smart. Um, the Loyalist Parkway signage was really impressive. It really made our groups curious about the significance of that and the heritage and wanting to find out more about what that was all about. Um, some of the farm gates we, th or we thought were difficult to find, like sort of small signage, um, or not enough notice to turn. But, you know, you're on a rural road, you turn, not the end of the world. The, the only thing I'll interrupt you there we went we came here out of season yes and and so did your group so yeah. with respect to farm gate and signage whatever they may not have been at their optimum or that mm -hmm. they might have been full in season in the summer mm -hmm. so that might been, have been part of True, it yeah. if if there isn't any difference in and out of season then i would agree yeah it was october uh, 6th and 7th sorry i should have said when we came through so kind of at the end tail end there um and some, these are just some direct quotes from some of the feedback we had from, from uh, members is, uh, you know, if you didn't have a map, you'd miss some of the hidden gems. But again, just because of the signage. But again, as a tourism director, I look at that as being, you do also want people to feel like they've happened to cross hidden gems. So it's kind of a balancing act there, right? Like, how do you how do, you do that? And then uh, Brent's quote actually in here is about, it was a little bit difficult to tell where a town stopped and started. So for example, you know, were you in Wapoose? Were we, are we in the town? Is this a region? Is this a hamlet? Like what kind of, where are we at? Again, from a tourism perspective, I, I don't know how important that is because I think that we probably as uh, staff and, and politicians think of town borders a lot differently. I don't think tourists really think, oh, now I'm entering this county or this, they're just, but that said, that's just a, a comment there. So just the opportunity there, we thought is just some more common signage, perhaps some updating some signage and some more common branding kind of across the board. Um, I really love, as I say, the whole, the county thing. So I don't know if there is anything to be able to brand some, do some more branding around that. Moving on to parking, we found that the parking conditions varied. Um, but there was some good parking in some areas, for example, Bloomfield, but I've been here in the summertime and it can be challenging to find a space, but you know, on a day like today, definitely parking is, is good. Um, there's often lots of parking we found available at roadsides, um, but there was, uh, we thought, poor signage around um, being able to find lots. But then again, it's, not, it's a rural area. We don't want to pave it with parking lots. Um, um, what else did we say? And, and in certain communities, walking is really, really good. So Bloomfield, Wellington, you know, once you're parked, you can kind of walk and experience the whole place for a few hours and not need to worry about, you know, filling up your meter or, or getting in your car to go to the next spot. Have you had anything around parking at all? Or? Like I say, that it wasn't in the rural area a problem at all. And like I say, Picton, it was, but they had three quarters of the street torn up. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they can be forgiven that... I, we weren't able to accurately gauge how good or bad. With a brand new street, I suspect it will be very nice. I think it's almost done now. In terms of just infrastructure, we just had some general comments. So uh, as Brent had said, it's clear that there's investment and infrastructure happening really throughout the whole region. Um, now, I know just from family that lives here and, and having a cottage here years ago that there are some public transportation options in the Belleville area, but the group had said there were no public transportation options. That was their observation. So I guess in terms of going to different areas within the county, that was a challenge. And, and I want to interject in that, and we don't have public transportation either. <laughs> the, the reason that it came to my mind is more different here is you have wineries that the biggest fun you can have probably is a drink. And if you'd like to go to two or three or four of them, that if there was some mechanism for people to get you about. Now, obviously, cycling's one, but mm -hmm. that's not for everybody. But just, again, some type of transportation option that if you happen to go for to three or four of them, mm -hmm. that uh, you, know, you could partake along the way. 
And if you're a little rusty on your bicycle, like I may be, a couple glasses of wine, probably not a good <laughs> idea. Um, the back roads were really were paved, we thought, for the most part, really well maintained. Um, Wi-Fi options, I think probably a lot more than, than we have in our county uh, for the moment. <laughs> um, public restrooms were often not available or difficult to find. That's, again, public restrooms. So there were restrooms that are in establishments. Um, and again, we can't stress enough, once you're outside of those main hubs, you really had a great kind of rural feeling, easily relaxed, get away from the commercial sides of things. Lots of agriculture, which is another area that, that we're jealous of being built on the Canadian shield as we are. We can't, we can't grow grapes either, sadly, or much yeah, of that, anything that really. Block, <laughs> that block soil, because we came in, it was post the season, so there's some feeds, fields that have been turned over, and yes, we covet that black earth that we can <laughs> see in your fields. Uh, so again, just more opportunity, obviously, to, to continue to support and develop infrastructure, which you're obviously embracing. In terms of local food itself, which was really our, was our mission, there was, there was good integration of local food products in, in different places. So we thought the local store, which was our understanding, had just opened, I think, that summer. Um, the cheese factory, a few wineries. Overall, the integration was very, we'd say, fairly strong. Um, there weren't any farmers markets that we could find and just in the OMAFR survey and when we were developing that survey in concert with, with you guys, it, farmers markets came up a lot in the questionnaire. So I think we were out of season, um, but we were told there were two somewhere. So did you have a question? Okay. All of the separate County closes down Thanksgiving weekend. Right. Okay. And, uh, but I go about year round. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Good. So I think, um, I guess maybe the point there is that when, once we were here, we were told that there were two farmers markets, um, but there was some confusion in the community into when, where they were and when they were open. So again, just from a tourism perspective, making that, you know, well, well aware so tourists know where those are. Um, in many cases, we found that local people and businesses were quite knowledgeable about local food and the product, which again, a bit of an area of jealousy, I think, for us uh, sometimes. Um, you, you, they seemed... Uh, you know, for example, we just had lunch. They're quite knowledgeable about, we were at the agrarian for lunch, which is a great experience. And so they know a lot about local food there. Um, we expected more farm gates, however, seasonality, right? October 6th and 7th, we were there. So keeping that in mind. Um, we had some varied experiences with the wineries. Some felt very, uh, you'll probably know exactly what we're talking about, sort of industrial or commercialized. Um, and others looked more just like they were kind of, they were just starting up like people's houses, essentially. Um, so we were just thinking maybe there can be some education done around some consistency again with marketing or branding, but I don't think small wineries or the feeling of a winery being like at someone's house is a bad thing. Cause again, we know tourists and I think you're after the same market we are really want that exclusive kind of hidden gem experience, which is exactly what these smaller wineries deliver. Um, and we do know that there's certain wineries who have received government funding and others haven't. And so there's obviously lots of stuff that's, that's happened over the years. Very impressed with, I think it was, you have 27, 26 wineries, I think, in 14 years was the number that we heard, which just like blew our minds. So it's like in crazy, crazy development. That's just fantastic. Um, more focused on couples than families overall, we felt, um, which is, you know, obviously families aren't really the Prince Edward County target, we didn't think. But overall, at most establishments, we thought they were more targeted towards couples um, than they were families. And that, and that isn't a bad thing no. if that's your target audience. If, mm -hmm. if, if the objective is to cultivate a particular audience, then that's fine. But yes, I, I see myself coming here with my wife. I didn't see myself so much coming here I would have years ago when my kids were little. And just, and like I say, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the presentation. It, it's a mature adult community mm -hmm. that was catering to people that have those kinds of interests. That, that was my perspective. Did you find that as a, on a tourist level, that it's nothing not enough to do for kids? No, it, it, it isn't that there is anything to do, and I wasn't necessarily looking. I'm just, you know the first impression? You know, like you, you see something and you have a mental image and whatever. It just, it seemed like a, a community that was, you know, mm -hmm. 25 to 70 year old people from the city for a weekend or whatever, 10 days that, mm -hmm. that, that kind, it had that vibe and that feel. And like I say, and that's not a criticism if that was your intention. Well, and I think too, we, again, we were looking at this as 
through the culinary the t- culinary tourism lens, right? But if we were looking at it through a family lens, then I think you know you can bring your family to Sandbanks and find lots of great family places. And I think so. Which I, think, I did forty some years ago yeah, with my parents. Yeah. So. so so yeah, so we know the options are there, but just for this particular project, and and I think what with the new businesses cropping up, definitely more couples oriented or singles or groups than um, people with families. Um, again, we thought guided tours um, could be an area of focus. You may do that like to the nines, but we, at, during our time, couldn't find um, like a lot of guided tours, one where we could sign up for and just kind of see everything. Um, but the, the comment was that they were very focused on wineries, so a couple of our people from our group said it would be great to have guided tours that did you know, arts, wineries, food, shopping, and offer all of that versus just, you know, here's five wineries. In, in, in a comment on that, the, the winery thing it appears from an outsider to have evolved and they have a lot of history. So they're ahead of some others mm-hmm. in your community, whatever, and that, you know, that they may, you know, catch up to where the wineries are in this, whatever, yep. but just they appear to, they're significant and then established, which maybe some of the others are not yet. Yeah. So that one opportunity that we thought, which ties into what Brent just said, is that the wineries maybe could include more local food and art. And I know that they are trying to get there for sure, but seeing as that's the draw and that's where people are seem to be going, be great to have some more offerings, um, you know, to try some cheeses and maybe there's some uh, art classes or things that could happen on site in, in partnership with, with wineries and more kind of uh, partnerships and cross promotion potentially. Um, continuing with local food, we found that restaurants that we had seen, uh, for the most part, had a good integration of local food and, and drink options on their menu. Staff were really friendly, um, educated about uh, what activities were happening in the community, which is a huge coup, uh, and, and kudos to you guys, because that's always a challenge with us, with seasonal staff and trying to get everyone up to speed on all the things that are happening in the community that they can tell tourists. Um, the wines and local products were very affordable, which is another huge thing, and I think that's probably an Ontario thing and a Canadian thing, where we say, oh, well, no one wants to pay X amount of dollars for this, right? But again, it's great if you're a tourist that you can, you can take some stuff home. Um, Vicky's Veggies, I'm sure you're all familiar with Vicky's Veggies. We just found that was a standout place that my group went there. Um, just had a great feel to it, awesome branding, a lot of partnerships with other businesses, it seemed, while we were there. And there actually weren't any staff while we were there. Obviously, if you've been there, you know, you just take some stuff and leave some money and take some change. And and somehow it worked without any staff, which blew our mind. Um, But then we said the agrarian in Bloomfield was great. Um, And about Vicky's Veggies, too, it was funny because when we started going into other shops, um, you know, you'd turn over a a pickled product and it would be from Vicky's Veggies. So we're like, hey, there's Vicky's Veggies. Anyway, um, so overall, when raiding the farm gates and, and the wineries and the orchards and other purveyors, our team, we had to give rating systems, gave ev- everything good or excellent for the most part. So, I mean, it's a fantastic experience, really, wherever you go. Um, but the opportunity, we thought here, was just, could there be more opportunity for the, the local food system? Like, how does it all work together? And is there sort of an overarching strategy that broadens it beyond wine and cheese and, and uh, kind of what more can you do there? Well, and not that it can be broader. Uh, I'll say this. I'm a red wine drinker, and, and typically, other than French and Italian reds, I don't like much else in the world, whatever. And I won't say which winery, but I drank a red uh, from this county that, that was uh, to my liking. And that's the first North American red that I've ever had that uh, was to that level. So other, I know other people that are into wines, especially some of your reds, that uh, definitely better reds here than, in my opinion, Niagara. So if people that are into wines, especially reds, if you're not leveraging that, I would leverage that some more. And, not, and again, the wine seems to be the golden goose. Don't give up the golden goose as you try to expand and do whatever, like protect and nurture what that is, whatever, and, and augment it, whatever. But uh, I'm saying kind of contrary to what you, I think you were saying here mm-hmm. a bit, is don't, don't damage the golden goose while you're doing the other things. Yeah. Festivals and events. Um, again, totally probably time of year that we were here. Again, I was just 
I myself know what happens in the community because I'm familiar with the community, but I was trying to just focus on me being a tourist that weekend. So there weren't any festival events that we could find while we were there, but we did learn about the terroir, terroir, I can't say that ever, um, wine and farmer's market in May, but we found that through online research. And we, while we were here, we were told about County Licious by a number of staff members at different establishments. So just the opportunity, we thought, you know, and this is a challenge, we, we hear this, you're probably just gonna be like, yeah. But ensure that stakeholders are aware of the festivals and events and promote widely to who's coming into their establishments. And um, of course, this is a challenge we have across the board. We have over 1400 tourism businesses in Halbert Highlands and to get everyone to have their staff know about all of these things and make sure they share them, always a challenge, but just uh, another opportunity there. Downtown and shopping areas. So uh, the cost of local food and drink, I said it again, is, is very affordable. And, I, and I'm just having this thought actually through this presentation, so I don't know if I'll express it well, but I, I feel like it is kind of a, I touched on this a bit before too, like a Canadian thing to say, well, you know, we're not quite where Europe is yet, so we're gonna stay kind of affordable, so people still visit us, but I think maybe as, as a, prominent counties in Ontario, we should start to think about where our price point is and, and what people are willing to pay for the good quality product that we know we have. Um, we found shopping was limited on, in, in towns generally, so like with clothing and takeaway items, um, but we noted that Picton did have a variety of outstanding retail locations and options, you had said, through the main street. Um, and then some larger downtowns, we talked about the commercial feel. Um, customer service overall across the board we found was really good. And the local store we found was just a standout shopping opportunity, um, just with a lot of integration and um, really great customer service. The women there were great and had lots of stories. And I think that's something that's interesting too. And we try to do in the Halliburton Highlands is, you know, we may be we may be small and and but we do have great product, but we have really great people who tell really great stories. And so I think that's something that um, you guys do well and can continue to encourage your business owners to do too, because I think that kind of helps with when tourists want to come from Toronto and they want to have this exclusive hidden gem experience when they hear the story of how a couple opened a winery and how their whole life changed and that's the kind of stuff that you can't you can't buy so we know people want to hear the, about that the people are more than 50 percent of the equation so a guest to your tourist operator and businesses whatever that that some of these things that are important in your initiatives is to make sure the staff know some of this stuff like you know what I mean because it's Literally, they're usually the point of contact, not necessarily the owners or anybody else or whatever, or a lovely marketing, whatever. It's the person you run into when you first come into it. And like I say, mm -hmm. had a couple of them that were outstanding, but just, uh, again, uh, and, and I know looking in the room, again, preaching to the converted in here, whatever, but that's, that's really important, and we know it well, so it, that, that we have the same gap. So just to encourage you to to uh, talk to your stakeholders in your community that do this, to, that that's important, that their people are knowledgeable, engaged, and they meet the tourists with a smile. Like those, mm -hmm. those cover a lot of other sins, like mm -hmm. if you yeah. do those things well. So, and, and in most instances, you did. And we had, uh, we actually had one, one team that said that they were in a town, which I can't remember where, I wanna say Wellington, but they ran into like a window washer who does all the windows in town. And they said he knew more than anything about the community and had this great chat with them and <laughs> gave them all this background. So it, again, it can be anybody who gives these great stories. And, and, uh, that and, that's, and that's a perfect example, right? You know, like the town crier or whatever, but the, <laughs> who knows more businesses than the individual cleaning the windows? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we were asked uh, in, the, in the survey sort of what was our perception versus reality, when, so what did we think before we came? So I think all, everyone had said the, reception, the perceptions were really close to reality. We really felt that Prince Edward County delivered on promises and expectations. Um, again, you know, we, opportunity, it's, it's hard to find opportunity, you guys are so great, but we said you know, just more collaboration, more partnerships with food products, and, uh, and keep on your right track, and I think as, as Brent said, like you know you know where the where the golden goose is, so to speak, and but just keep kind of adding some layers onto that. And the other part is the tourist. I like anything that goes fast and boats included. Uh, you have a lovely natural harbor that is kind of half lovely, and with the old inn at the end of it, I know that it's the feds. But I would to do what you can do on that side because it is a beautiful harbor, and and. Uh, I don't know what volume of boating traffic comes, but if you made that better, whatever your number is, you would get more. 
Mm -hmm. um, marketing materials. So we found, and you know, we find this with our, our stuff as well, but there seem to be many websites promoting the area. So we were kind of asking ourselves, like, who is the go-to? Like, what's the, the main site? Is it a county website? Is it run by private stakeholders or citizens? Um, the wine tour map, the little one that kind of folds in, in a really cool way, was standout material. But on it, it, it had five farm gates listed. So we thought, are, is there, are there more? Is there more opportunity for integration there? Um, the materials and physical locations, again, a challenge we have. There was lots of it, but some of it was outdated. And that's probably just a staff thing or who, who brings, you know, who can keep that all updated? We know everyone's busy. Um, so the opportunity here is, could there be sort of one digital lead? And if you crack this nut, we want to know too, but how does it work with really that you have one place that's go-to that's, sh that's putting out the digital and social media activities and then stakeholders are kind of sharing that messaging versus having kind of across the board uh, materials. The wine tour map we thought would be great if it was available and promoted digitally. If it is, if it is already, then maybe just more widely than... In, than and uh, although I'm the gray-haired guy, I'm a techie. Um, mobile technology, both in cost and keeping stuff current, gives you great... Uh, potential for the future. A lot of these sort of things can be covered by that and we're working on ourselves that, that you get to the point that it knows where I am, it'll populate what's around me, that it can take me and lead me by the hand. And I'm, I'm not talking using Google, I'm saying something in Odo has a version that's a beta, one point, mm -hmm. whatever, it needs to go to two point, whatever. But anyways, it has the essence of it. But if you have something like that, that could lead them through your community, and it'll evolve to the point that it can have articles or a walking tour, whatever. Again, you have the exact kind of region that if you have people that have this proficiency, support them and push them because they'll do a lot of good things going forward for you if you'll mm -hmm. chase this hard. Mm -hmm. That's from a gray-haired techie. <laughs> yes, you, sir. You, um, one of the things we challenged you to do in this pilot was to use our technology. We're sorry for that. If it was, if it was painful, but mm. thank you for the effort that all of you, by the way, put into to helping us to, to go through that. How did you find Wi-Fi coverage? So looking at, you know, digging into local food as you're making your way around, so, what was that experience so like? So what I can tell you coming from Halliburton County, which in the Eastern Ontario's Wardens District, we have the biggest holes and flaws of anybody, okay? So now I talk with Clean In. It, 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 was, it was average. It wasn't, you know, it's not urban uh, in terms of speed and power or whatever, but I think it's sufficient in the areas that I was that you could leverage a mobile uh, technology to do that, whatever. Obviously more is better and, you know, as the wardens, we we're on uh, Parliament Hill Monday morning begging for the next generation, which I'm hoping successful, but I, I think it's coming and, and it will help. But I, I think it's sufficient for you to get a good start and I think that there's more improvement from government and industry that in the not too distant future that you'll really be able to leverage it. it. So as it, you were traveling in Sober County and looking for local food, you had enough coverage that you would have expected to be able to use a mobile device then? That, you, that would be one of your go-to's. Well, I'm a realist. I, the, we're rural communities that have mixed capabilities and whatever. Um, that's kind of leading edge, but that's, as a techie, that's kind of who I am. I just, I'm encouraging you at this point to get the essence, the framework of it built. The rest of it will come. But mm -hmm. uh, I think you have, like I say, your coverage is better than ours. So, so we, we would be happy today to switch your coverages. Uh, so I would say that, but... Um, I, didn't, and I didn't have any issues in the areas that I was in using the mobile phones. And I paid particular attention because when we got out to the eastern end, I was, went, whether you had coverage. So with our 4,000 square kilometers and all the hills, whatever, maybe 50% coverage would be, I'm probably being generous. And then there's technically hooking up and then there's having enough bandwidth that if you actually wanted it, that you're in the right place, that it'd give you a little, what they used to call them, vignettes, those little video things, whatever, mm -hmm. that uh, to give you one of those that it may or may not do that, whatever, but at least a text-based one to locate where you are that you could do that. Uh, we were also asked to describe the community kind of using only a 
your senses. So like, there were tons and tons of words, but I just picked out, kind of did a bit of a word cloud and picked out what, uh, what our team had said. So diverse, interesting, flavorful, tasty, buttery was one of our favorite. Actually, a couple of people said that. Um, fresh, welcoming, peaceful, uh, genuine, again, hidden gem and safe. And I put this last and it's funny because I, I actually thought it was a funny word. I was like safe. That's, that's just odd. But, um, I think it's something we also take for granted in our communities and in both counties is, you know, you don't need to be hanging on to your purse, like maybe some well, other places that you go. And I, I think, left my windows and sunroof open in my vehicles when I was in multiple locations and never felt any inclination to lock it. So those of us who live in rural communities, like we might think that that's the norm, but in this world, that's not. And that's, that has real value, that, it's, that you can have a safe feeling in your community. Um, so five positives. One, wineries. Obviously, you guys know you've done a great job of that. Um, the heritage homes and buildings, um, quality products, uh, beautiful landscapes, great soil, and solid customer service. And we gave you a bonus positive for just really taking, clearly taking pride in your efforts. I mean, everyone we talked to just so proud of the county and so proud of the work that that's happening everywhere um and that was really that really sh uh, shone through uh three potential opportunities again it was hard it's hard to find these things um but i think continue to evolve the region sort of to to more of a local food hub region which we talked about um streamlining some marketing efforts which you know we all want to do but maybe we did see that um, prince edward county had was going after some specific markets like Quebec, so maybe, you know, streamlining some more marketing, targeted marketing. Uh, look beyond seasonality, of course, again, another Canadian challenge. People come in the summer and then, you know, how do we, how do we stay interesting beyond that? So I have a question. So we're seasonal, we have summer and winter, so we have problems in between. So on the tourist side in the winter, does it stay kind of in the dormant stage like we saw when we came in the fall, or is there kind of another season that if we came another time in the middle of the winter, we'd catch another whole experience in the winter. And that's just a question. Yes, ma'am. I'm probably one of the oldest town ones here. Okay. My ancestry goes back to day one. Okay. And I'm seventh generation on the main farm I have. Um, I've seen, growing up here, I've seen summer, lots of people, winter, nothing. And that has completely changed. Mm -hmm. There's always some activity every month here, mm -hmm. like a big activity. Now, like, so my question is with that, is that a function of more people coming in that you have more yes. permanent residents? Do you see in the winter, apart from those people, do people still come in the winter for a destination to do it? That's really the question I'm asking. Yeah, because um, the end of March is maple season and we have a fantastic, huge, Maple Festival every year. Okay. And this year it poured. Oh. It come down in Buckets Lake today. Mm -hmm. And there was people running. And it was cold. There was people running around here and there and all over. And, uh, and it used to be in Pacific areas. Now it's at the farms. And it goes from area to area to area. And people are driving constantly throughout the county. And every month there's something. And it's changing. I've seen the change. You see the difference, you know, in the clientele and everything. And the wineries has been a big impact in bringing more and more people because they weren't open when they first started in the winter. And now they are not open maybe any week, but at the end of the week they're open. And that brings in the wine tours are happening year round, there's special occasions. You know, people are getting married in the county. They weren't locals that married in the county, mm -hmm. but not people from Kingston, you know, Ottawa, and that in Prince Edward County. Mm -hmm. So it's coming more and more. Our heritage is changing. Mm -hmm. Great. So this is the last slide. Again, I apologize for sitting. I did not escape the Halliburton flu like I thought I may have. Um, so five like biggest challenges. Again, these are so hard to find for you guys, but and in no particular order. But we just said it felt like there were too many different websites. We have the same issue. Um, this is our assumption that you're likely overrun in peak seasons. Like there's just so many people coming, and how do you handle that? And it's a great problem to have, right? But that and we have the same. I think the same issue there. Um, 
maintaining your rural charm. So how, how do you expand and increase your infrastructure and but still have that hidden gem feel that we know people kind of yearn for? Um, the lack of consistent signage, again, not a huge point, just there for, for branding sake. Um, and then we said uh, raising businesses to the same standard. We put quotes around it. And we said, we get this too. And, and uh, this is just sort of that, again, it speaks a lot to the people, I think. And it, so you guys definitely already have an advantage in this way. But just so that as a tourist, whether you walk in you know, a highly commercial establishment that's had lots of investment or just a grassroots organization that you kind of have the same experience and you get the same vibe and you feel like you're in the county. Um, so just a thought and uh, and yeah, just, you know, thanks so much for having us and doing this project with us. Um, hopefully you've learned something from this. We're gonna send um, our, all of our comments. We have like a 60 page document that's got everything in there, very candid. Um, but yeah, so if you, if you have questions or, or thoughts, uh, we're happy to, to chat further. I hope you found this valuable and don't think we're way out to lunch. Um, but no, yeah. thanks. ask Neil Carboni, he's the Director of Community Development, and uh, we were fortunate to receive this uh, presentation prior to Amanda and Brent coming down here, um, and he's going to explain a few initiatives that the Community Development Department is doing to address some of these uh, uh, points that were brought out in your presentation. Okay. Uh, well, first, uh, a big thank you, Amanda and Brent. We really appreciate you and the team having come here. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, speaking from, from Prince Edward County's perspective, um, you know, I think you're, you're your own worst critic a lot of times. And so to, to have feedback from the outside, especially from people who are looking at it from the different perspectives, as you said, both from a government, government perspective, uh, as, as a lot of us are, are forced to in part do, uh, but also putting ourselves in those personas and, and looking at our different assets and attractions in that way too, um, I, I think is really beneficial. Um, the information here was fantastic and uh, there's definitely some new things here, but I think what stood out uh, to me the most is that we have a lot of kind of new initiatives or some challenges that have either been identified in the past and haven't really been addressed uh, or that we are just starting to address now. And a lot of what you have told us has validated some of that. And I think that's, that's really good for us. It's really good in the eyes of, of, of the public that uh, um, is either participating along with us and trying to make some of those changes uh, or maybe wondering if we're taking the right approach in different areas as well. And so to have a little bit of reinforcement that um, we've identified some of those, those right things um, uh, is, is certainly beneficial for us. So I wanted to share a couple things, both, both with you um, as some of the ideas we've had to address some of the things that you've, that you've pointed out, uh, but also with everyone else in attendance today who may or may not be a part of that or aware of, of uh, some of the things that we're doing. Um, uh, the first big one was the perception versus reality uh, comment that you made. Uh, and I think it was really, really great for us to hear that uh, your perception from the outside before coming was more or less met with the reality when you got here. Um, and it, I don't think it was that long ago when um, you know, the county was doing fantastic things in marketing itself and starting to get some of, this, uh, some of these assets and infrastructure and experiences uh, going. Um, but we were hearing at that time that, um, that the perception wasn't always meeting the reality, that we were almost a bit ahead in, in, how, in maybe overselling the county. And uh, luckily, all of the work that went in to, uh, to create that foundation over the last 10 years has now resulted, I think, in, in that perception being more accurate. Uh, so to hear that now is really great. Uh, you know, we certainly appreciate that. And it puts into context the vision and the hard work that happened 10 years ago from a lot of different people that has resulted in a lot of things that are, that are now coming to fruition. Um, when you mentioned, you know, don't give up on the wineries as you're, as you're uh, you know, looking to address other areas, uh, something that we've really strived to do is to treat 
our existing assets, especially with tourism, um, which certainly the wineries are a huge part of, as the thin edge of the wedge is kind of the phrase that I'm always using, is that if you're looking to attract families, which is the direction that we're trying to head in, um, if, if you're looking at growing your population, if you're looking at expanding into, into different areas, um, you, you, you rely on your strengths to help you do that. You leverage the things that you already have. So um, that's very much been our approach, uh, is pivoting from some of those strong positions uh, in those other directions. Uh, so we appreciate getting that feedback as well. Uh, the, the technology comments that you made were, were really impactful. And I've got two staff, three staff actually, that are uh, in, in the room right now that are specifically focused in those areas. Do we have more? Oh yeah, Todd is here too. Four staff that are working uh, in these areas really strongly and we're starting to roll out exactly uh, what you mentioned this year actually, this summer, uh, trying to consolidate some of those web presences. <laughs> we would be happy to share that stuff, yeah. Uh, but for us, it's, it's a lot of trial and error as well. And as, as you said, you put the framework in place, and then the rest of it starts to, to, to build around that. Uh, and the fact that we have some really good knowledge and skill in-house to help us do that uh, has been invaluable uh, uh, for myself, for the department, and for the county. So um, certainly watch for that if you're coming to visit again, because in a few months, if you're looking online, you might start to see some different things. Um, and part of that whole visitor services experience uh, also deals with wayfinding and signage in particular. And, and the big thing we're trying to do is connect the wayfinding with the online resources so, so that they're not two separate things, they're connected. So when you're seeing things, whether it's in print, it mirrors what you're seeing electronically, it mirrors what you're seeing in infrastructure, signage, mapping. Um, and, and the experience that you, you have, the experience that you're expecting from all those materials before you come is then familiar because everything you're seeing is the, is, is the same things that you, were, that you were looking into as part of that research. Yeah? So you built the GIS engine with the whole locale and whatever that actually will directly do all that? You, have you built the GIS engine? Well, we, we actually have a really fantastic GIS uh, department and existing GIS system, um, and, and their strengths are largely in wayfinding and parcel fabric and things like that. Um, I think that our uh, approach is going to be um, leveraging some of the Google assets, and then there's some other plugins and things that we can use for that. Uh, but again, it's going to be some trial and error. We are going to be going with location-based uh, information, which I think is the big thing, is, is you want to know what's around you and where that closest uh, thing that you need actually is. And so um, we're starting this year with getting a lot of our tourism businesses and assets and experiences uh, plugged into this system so that we can start to build it out the way you're talking about. Um, another thing, you mentioned the marina uh, in Picton, in Picton Harbor specifically. So, well, yeah? I was in the marine business. My father-in-law, uh, brother-in-law, and my first cousin still owns the marina for big boats. So obviously boats are important. Okay. <laughs> so I, I appreciate you saying that, you know, there was the, 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 the federal docks, or you said the federal side. Um, I, I wish that was the case. Unfortunately, we are responsible for all of it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but the, the, for the first, the first, you know, thing you got to do to fix something is recognize that you have a problem. So uh, luckily, it was just a couple of weeks ago that we passed uh, a brand new Picton Harbor vision, which was the culmination of about a year and a half of work with uh, uh, a lot of stakeholders, including our business association that's here today from Picton, um, a lot of people who are invested in uh, uh, the marine sector, the boating sector, uh, and the business sector in, in the county. And, and we're seeing huge pressures for growth and development here because of the popularity of the county. Um, and Picton Harbor represents one of those biggest opportunities because there's development land there, um, there's, there's, there, there's pressure and interest in seeing more activities and assets, and it's this jewel that is kind of disconnected from the rest of Picton and a lot of the surrounding assets. Um, and we've got assets that we can connect it to. So uh, for, for you to kind of point out that yes, that is a jewel that you could be doing a lot more with and that could be a greater asset for you uh, is, is certainly reinforces what our committee found and what it spells out in that, uh, in that plan. If you're curious, we'd be happy to send it to you so you can see if some of those ideas and visions are some of the things that you might have, uh, you might have envisioned kind of being down there. Uh, and one of those first things is fixing the boardwalks, so, so that's good. Um, 
I, I think that's it's kind of touching on, on uh, a lot of the, the high points that really resonated uh, with me. Um, uh, you know, to everyone that is here, these are the things that we are trying to address um, and uh, in partnership with a lot of uh, people in the community, groups, businesses, associations, uh, which I think is the way you have to do these things. They don't manifest on their own um, and certainly these things can't be entirely left to municipalities or government to do. They need to be partnerships. So. Um, again, really appreciate uh, the effort that you put in, uh, the fantastic feedback. It really does help us out in a lot of areas, lets us move some of these things forward, and gives us some ideas uh, for things that maybe we hadn't made as, as, as much of a priority, uh, and helps us kind of shift those things around uh, a little bit. So a thank you to you, and a big thank you to Grace. Uh, um, and Karen for helping to organize all of this. I get to stand up here, but Grace is the one in the background that made all this happen, so thank you very much for that. So thanks. Thank